Hi, and welcome back to the Why Mayo podcast. This is Janine Steen, your host, hoping to answer your questions about the who, what, where, when, why, and how when it comes to myofunctional therapy. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Why Mayo podcast. I want to spend today discussing a little bit about the lack of understanding and lack of awareness and failure to realize what myofunctional therapy can do to support both medical and dental providers. I always find it interesting that such educated individuals, especially those that have been practicing for a period of time, that they don't understand the negative implication that the lingual muscle or the tongue can have on the bone being the dentition or the palate. It also perplexes me that we will send a patient that broke their leg to an orthopedic surgeon to address the break and a physical therapist to address the muscles around that break so that we can improve the strength, agility, range of motion, and skill of that individual that broke their leg and required intervention. Why is that different when it comes to the tongue? Why is it different that we don't assess or determine what the tongue is doing and the negative implication that tongue could have in the oral cavity, on the hard palate, on the teeth, especially when we are sending our patients for orthodontic interventions, palate expanders, rakes, cribs, and habit-breaking appliance appliances, Invisalign and Smile, and all different types of orthodontic intervention that are designed to move the bone, which are the teeth, but yet we never discuss or address the muscle, which is moving those teeth, which is the tongue. Myofunctional therapy is designed to do just that. So why is there not a myofunctional therapist working hand in hand with every lactation consultant, dentist, orthodontist, pedodontist, oral surgeon, and the list goes on and on. Actually, I'm more disturbed by the limited understanding and knowledge of the medical and dental providers and the negative implications that that muscle could have on the bone. So if we want to correct our bite or our teeth or give us more room in our palate, how can we just address the bone if the muscle is never the focus of the intervention? Isn't the cause of the problem the muscle? The bone is just the symptom. We often find that we will see that providers will recommend an intervention for addressing the issues associated with the bone, like braces or a palate expander, or even so far as a habit-breaking appliance, like a rake or a crib. However, we never work to retrain the muscle or the problem, which is the muscle, which is the tongue. I think it is extremely important for the medical and dental providers to become more well-versed in the negative implication that the tongue is having on not just the success of their patients, but on the need and type of intervention that is being recommended. And perhaps we should be working together as one unit as a means to providing that long-term success that we are all searching for. I hope I was able to give you some insight and answer some of your questions regarding myofunctional therapy. 
Please stay tuned and listen to our Mayo Minute and tune in to our Talk the Talk interviews with the many different medical, dental, and rehab professionals as they elaborate or answer your questions and address your concerns directly, especially when it's related to speech language pathology and myofunctional therapy.